Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our online service. We're so happy that you could tune in. Now, there's no doubt that COVID-19 has impacted the physical and economical health of our community. So if you find yourself in need of prayer today, or if you're short on essential items, please shoot us an email at help at avjourney.com. Grace Resources is packing up food for families here in the Ella Valley, and Journey Church would love to help out. We need volunteers right now to head over to Grace Chapel every Monday until COVID-19 is over from 8.45 to 12 p.m. If you want to help out and serve the community, that would be so awesome. This food will go towards elderly and also families that just need help during this really difficult time. If you want more information, you can contact Sharon Johnson at S johnson at graceresources.org every time we give 10 percent of that goes to supporting incredible projects in our community and around the world and we're going to continue doing that over the next several weeks as we navigate this unique season of life that we're all finding ourselves in we're ramping up our efforts to support these kind of causes and every time we give we're a part of that. Here at Journey, even though we can't meet physically, there are still a lot of ways that you can stay connected throughout the week. On Tuesday, we're continuing to fast and pray at noon on our Instagram Live with a short encouraging teaching from one of our staff members. Wednesdays, you can hop on our Zoom groups and share life with other people from our community. For the youth, you can watch The Crash Live on YouTube at 7 p.m. Our JKids video curriculum is also available to watch on our website. Thanks again for joining us today. Our service will begin shortly. Send revival 
Thanks for joining us. Last week was Easter, and we talked about uh, Jesus' story from the point of Friday all the way through to Sunday. And uh, in that story, my dad took us through the experience of, of your, your Friday experience, your Saturday experience, your Sunday experience. But the reality is, is that as much as we were able to celebrate on Sunday the resurrection of the King, the reality is Monday comes, and you may find yourself now in a Monday. You have the truth, we have the freedom, we have the joy, but it doesn't mean that there isn't the storms of life that still seem to come around. Today, as we're, as we're filming this, it's stormy outside, it's overcast, it's windy, and uh, it reminds me when I was a kid. We took this missions trip to Florida. While we were there, however, we found out that there was a hurricane that was on its way. So I will never forget the day that we went to the mall and we got to do everything as normal. I, I was able to pick out this life-sized leopard, this fluffy, stuffed leopard that became my companion during the course of this trip. But that night, that very night, we had gone to the store because this hurricane was on its way and we had to tape the windows in our hotel room. And I remember that as we laid there trying to sleep, the windows started shaking back and forth. You could hear all the chaos that was going out, out, on outside. There was a, a power line that broke and you saw sparks and things going on. And I remember just holding on to this little leopard as I laid on the floor in my room or in our, in our hotel room. And, and I thought about the fact that like this could be it. 
my little 10 year old self thinking this is it. And I realized that, that this was a moment in time that, that you never expect as we're on a missions trip there to help other people that we could be the very ones to need help. That you think because you're there, you know, loving Jesus and loving other people that this is, this is all gonna be perfect for us and we're just gonna be able to, to do this thing well. We feel good about ourselves. We go home and life goes on. But storms don't seem to work out that way. And it's interesting that in this time of quarantine, while this pandemic is going on, it's really something that feels a lot like a storm. And you, then you may be in a Monday and, and experienced Jesus and know the truth and the love. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you are suddenly exempt from pain and loneliness, from fear, uh, from hopelessness, from financial duress, from, from isolation. Life still gets really real. You can still get sick. These are moments in time where we recognize that the storms of life still come. The disciples, even though they experienced all of this, still had to encounter their Monday. The days after Jesus' resurrection, the days after Jesus departs and heads back to heaven, they have the Holy Spirit now, but the reality is, is life still went on. And we find that this is a theme throughout scripture. Consistently, you start to see these moments where there are storms and Jesus preparing the disciples for this time before they head out. We see this in, in Mark chapter four, verse 35 through 41. There's a story that, that we see about Jesus with his disciples. I wanna read it to you in th verse 35. It says, and evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving with the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were, were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was, was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked, them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Interesting moment. You see, I, I think it's so funny when you read about Jesus in these moments with the disciples, they are facing natural disaster. They are facing things that any normal human is going to look at and think, this is chaos. We are going to die. We are going to drown. And I think in moments like today, we may feel the same way. You may feel completely out of control in your life as you're, as you're experiencing um, new, new norms. Life is completely altered. There is no sense of normal. Chaos has ensued as, as maybe you're working from home or you've been laid off entirely. Uh, where you are in isolation or, or you're with just your family trying to, to hold out as this thing is going on. Um, these are moments in time where it feels like it's all around you. The disciples are sitting here and these are, these are extremely uh, skilled mariners. These are men who have been on boats. This is their, this is their career path. This is, this is what they do for a living they are not new to storms in their lives, and yet they are terrified that they're going to die. I call on Jesus. Jesus just simply rebukes the wind and the waves, and, and everything calms. And, and now they're not just terrified of, of the circumstances. They're terrified of Jesus. And you see this theme continue on later on. There's another story where, where Peter and the disciples are all in this boat in the middle of the night and a storm arises and Jesus decides to meet them later on and, and Jesus comes walking out on water. They think it's a ghost. So what does Peter do? What any normal person would do. He asks Jesus to call him out. So he does. And Peter starts stepping out of the boat and starts walking on water towards Jesus. But scripture tells us that he gets caught up in the circumstances and the things that are going on around him, the waves, the wind, uh, the water pelting him in the face, all become things that distract him. He loses sight of Jesus and he starts to sink. Jesus immediately comes over, picks him up, and he, and he asks him why he has such small faith. Do you ever feel like moments come up and arise where Everyone around you is talking about faith and how it's important to have big faith. And, and scripture literally refers to these people when, when they're talking to them as little faiths. 
And that's, a, that's something that is so hard for us, I think, at times when we're living in our human context. When the world is a big place, when, when we've lived in a world that seems so safe and, and, and we have so much control over our circumstances where we are living out our own lives, independent, not really needing God as much. And now we're in a season where something microscopic has completely put the world on hold had stopped it entirely. And maybe you feel like you're in this moment. Maybe you feel like you're just waiting it out. You're holding out. Maybe you're calling out. And you're not seeing Jesus answer your, your cry, your cry to still the storm. I think it's interesting because we go on with Paul, and, and even though Paul was equally one of the disciples, he was an apostle of Christ, Paul talks directly in 2 Corinthians about the fact that he experienced shipwreck three different times and was left afloat at sea, just, just floating there for a full day in the middle of the, the ocean or, or the lake, perhaps. But these are moments that Paul can be the first to testify, just because you have a relationship does not mean you're exempt from the experiences that go on all around you. Yes, the disciples experienced freedom from the storm, but Paul didn't. Paul went through it. Paul was left stranded in the middle of the, of the water. And maybe you feel like you, you can relate more to Paul. You're going through it and your season is, is, is something that feels so much more like you calling out and getting no response, getting no answer. And these are moments that that really begins, I think, to challenge where we stand with Christ, where, what we do believe. It's moments when we can read stories like this and you've probably heard these stories. I'm not teaching anything new today. I'm not talking about anything you haven't probably heard before. And yet, you may roll your eyes because as I talk about it, it we can so easily oversimplify the idea of, okay, we take this piece of scripture and, and we look at it and it's like, okay, now apply it to your world. And we roll our eyes in this moment of like that, to oversimplify it just seems so condescending almost. It's... It just seems not to reach the full gravity of where we're at. But seasons like these are revealing because like any other, any storm, it rocks the boat. And what's really inside our boat comes out. And for a lot of us, it's coping. It's, it's things that we are holding onto, things that we anchor to that aren't really Christ at all. Maybe you're just waiting this thing out. You just, you're, you're holding out for this thing to just be over, but you've heard that they're potentially prolonging it to a later and a later date, and you just feel devastated. You're stressed, you're anxious, you're overwhelmed. And the reality is, is it's, this isn't a moment where you can just hold out anymore. I think these are moments that we recognize what we really cling to to feel better. This is where words like coping mechanisms, self-awareness, how do you deal? Are you just numbing through this process? Are you just kind of trying to neutralize it all and minimize the uncertainty by trying to take control of whatever you can, whether you know it's your finances, your relationships, your eating, your fitness, uh, whatever it is, you're looking for ways of dealing with this. And some are healthy, but some are not. And in these moments, it really begins to define for us where Jesus fits into our story, where he fits into our lives. It's ironic as, as we have this nautical theme uh, that this is actually the week, this Wednesday, is the 108th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. This was considered... Uh, to be this, this luxury vessel that was said to be unsinkable. And yet on its maiden voyage, as, it, as it's making its way through the ocean, it ends up, as, as most of you know, hitting an iceberg. And as it does, it tears a 300-foot hole in the ship. Later on, them real, they begin to realize that this is, this is not something they can fix, but by this point, it's too late. And as it begins to sink, they realize they had completely overestimated their ability to do this 
on their own, that they thought they had, they had minimized the amount of, of um, rescue vessels they had, that they had placed on the ship because they didn't think it could actually sink. This was a mistake that cost the lives of over 1,500 people. And I think in so many times, these are the moments that you recognize. I, I think that's in significant of moments like these. Um, because I think so many of us become this, this vessel, this boat that we think we're just going to get through this on our own. I, ju- I just, maybe it is just you and Jesus in your opinion. I don't need anybody else. Just me and Jesus. We're just going to get through this. We just got to wait through it. We just got to, we just got to hold on and, and, and we just got to weather the storm and, and all of that. And we, we like to over spiritualize and we like to make these moments something that's like, well, I'm strong and I can deal and we'll just get through it. But the reality is, is this isn't just about getting through it. This is a moment that as we're sitting in it, I wonder if you hear the cries of those who are desperately looking for hope. Those who feel themselves sinking. Maybe it wasn't a storm, it was an iceberg for the Titanic, but it it caused just as much destruction. And in those moments, we realize we don't need more uh, luxury yachts. We don't need, need more cruise liners that are just waiting this thing out and trying to make it as comfortable as possible. My dad talks often about the church not being a cruise ship for the convinced, but a rescue vessel. My prayer is that as we're searching and as we're, as we're seeking through what God is doing in this season, that it doesn't just cause you to, to introspect, to look deeply inside yourself, to begin to work through how you're processing this. Are you processing this? But that awareness begins to help you turn outward and hear the cries of those around you who are desperately searching for hope. Now that, that, that's a tough thing to begin to answer, to look for in a season where we're also asked to socially isolate. And we're gonna have to begin to pray for unique ways of, of dealing with this. But the reality is, is the central theme throughout scripture is Jesus. Jesus is the one who calmed the storm in the first story. Jesus is the one that Peter is meant to lock eyes with in the second. In Hebrews 6.19, it says, This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He's become our eternal high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This hope is is a strong and trustworthy anchor of our souls. What are you anchoring yourself to? What are you anchoring your soul to? What is helping you survive this season? See, the anchor that it's referring to is Jesus. It is the gospel. It is the good news. This hope, what is the hope? It's in Jesus. See, it's a, I know you may be sitting here and just thinking, okay, but how is Jesus really meant to get me through this? The reality is this is where our, our awareness of self, what we're dealing with, our, our attempts to take control, to take the reins, to feel better about our circumstances, you start to realize there is nothing that we can really hold on to that can make us truly feel better. There is nothing. Everybody's lives, oh, there's a ginormous question mark. When is this gonna be over? How is it gonna affect us financially? What's it gonna do to our relationships? What is it gonna do um, for the future, and we, did, we can't truly answer it. But what we can do is we can look, begin to look to Jesus. Is Jesus a concept and an idea that has become something that you, you look to and, and make yourself kind of, it, it, it's, it's an added coping mechanism to an already filled uh, emotional way of dealing with all your, all your struggles and tensions? Or does he become the anchor that you cling to? Where you turn when you have an anxiety attack, maybe you put on worship. That when depression starts to sink in, you first grab for for a moment with him. Maybe your journal and your Bible and you sit with him. But this isn't just between us and God. What we begin to realize is, is we have to begin to look outside of ourselves. There's two ways of looking at this. People either become uh, 
those around us that are also in need and it draws us close to each other or people become the enemy and we become afraid of them and so we push far from them. My prayer is that this becomes a season that we draw in close, that we look for ways to meet the needs of those around us. It's been interesting as I've been watching studies and reading up that there is actual physiological impact on our immune system with whether or not we are in contact and in connection with other human beings. They are finding that a lack of human connection, a lack of interaction can actually affect our immune system and cause it to be depleted to where we can't even fight the sickness that's going on all around us. We think that isolating ourselves is actually the answer when in reality we, we set ourselves up to have more of a compromised immune system by not allowing ourselves to connect with those around us. It is important that we connect with Jesus, but then that we also see this as an opportunity to connect with others, that we share our experiences, that part of healing is coming together, that in so doing, we look to Jesus and it adds whole new weight maybe for you. In, in John 16, 33, when Jesus is talking himself to the disciples and he says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. I love that he doesn't try to make it seem as though this is something we all get to, to steer clear of, that somehow we get to avoid the storms because we're, we have Jesus and because we have the resurrection, you're still facing a Monday. But he does say this, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Now I'm not gonna oversimplify this and pretend like fear is not a reality. I think fear is a normal response to a lot of uncertainty in our world. But the question does remain, where does your faith fit into all of this? How does it inform your decisions, your emotions, your behaviors? Is this a season that is going to call us to, to rise above ourselves, to, to become better versions of ourselves, not just for us, but for those around us? Or will we sink into depression? Will we allow the anxiety to overtake us, the isolation? Will we allow ourselves to become paralyzed by our fear? My prayer to this morning is that as we sit here, that we begin to, to self-reflect, to recognize what part Jesus plays in our world not to beat us, ourselves up, not to beat you up that you have no faith, that maybe you find yourself a little faith here today, but to ask yourself, how, in what way can you begin to implement anchoring yourself to Jesus more this week than you did last? That as this thing progresses with the uncertainty of when it'll end, that we make it a daily practice to how to make Jesus, to allow Jesus to become the anchor of our souls, to look to him. So I wanna pray with you today. Maybe you've not encountered Jesus yet and you, didn't, you haven't experienced Easter and the Easter story and the, the, the moment where Jesus has resurrected from the grave. And you wanna do that today. If, that, if that's the case, if you could just click the little button um, that is a raise hand feature that allows us to know that that you would like to invite Jesus into your life today, I wanna to just pray. And after that, I wanna just continue the prayer for those of you who are just struggling, that find this to be a, a dark season that is just overwhelming and you're, you feel like you're drowning already and you're just looking for, for something to hold on to, something to hope And This is a moment where we're gonna pray. If you would, let's pray together. God, first and foremost, I pray for those who want, would like to invite you into their story. For those of you who have been trying to weather the storm on their own and have overestimated their own strength, their own ability to just to do this on their own, they've just tried to, to hold out, to wait it out. God, I pray that this would be a moment that they, as they invite you in, they would experience a peace that, that, that you, Jesus, you yourself said would be present as we look to you. Father, I pray that, that you would just... Um, enter into the stories of those who are inviting you in, that they would experience your presence, your life, your hope. And God, for the rest of us, I pray for those who are struggling with anxiety right now. 
I pray for those who are struggling with deep sense of isolation and, and, and depression. Father, that this would be a moment that they would just see you, that we would once again recognize the circumstances all around us and yet lock eyes back with you, that we would anchor ourselves to you, Father, that we would look to you, that we would implement more and more practices that allow us to connect with you and the people around us. But Father, as we heal and as we grow through this season, I pray that it would also allow us to hear the cries and the needs of those around us. That our job is not to preach at people, to just give them and, and yell at them some cliche answer, but it's, it's also to be part of the solution, Father, that we would become a life raft that is pulling people in, that we would hear the cries of those hopeless and drowning, that we would point them to you, that you would be seen, that you would be known, and that we would be better as a result of this quarantine and this season. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope this is helpful for you, that as you take some time this week, you're able to experience Jesus in a fresh way. We look forward to seeing you guys next time. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough you came along and you put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you oh there's God of the valleys There is not a place Your mercy and grace won't find